Thank you so much for joining me for part three of this series. I think there are only three possible reasons that you're still here with me. One is that you're actually wanting to make this tool. Two is that you, like me, just like watching people making stuff and cutting steel and things. And third, that you're really quite excited about seeing how many more cock-ups I can make while making this tool. And you know, whatever the reason, I'm really glad you're here and keep the comments coming. I really, really appreciate it. So let's go. Let's get on with it. Thanks. So these are the pieces that we're going to make today. This one, this one, and this one. Um, these are have 10 millimeter holes drilled through them to take the columns. And this one has another 10 millimeter hole, which will be to hold the tapping column. This piece in the middle here is has a tenon and mortise joint into these two pieces. Harold Hall makes it very clear that you mustn't drill these three holes until you've assembled the whole piece because they have to be incredibly true and, and, and parallel for this instrument to work at all. So I think what I'm going to do is first I'm going to make this centerpiece um, which has the, the tenons on it and um, try and get that right first. So this will be an operation for the milling machine. So, as I mentioned, I'm going to start with um, this piece, number 13, which if we look in the, in the book, if you can see this, let me see if I, I hope it's all focusing okay, is 82 mil across, and then I'm going to make the tenons, which are 6 mil in, and uh, they're going to, therefore, 2 mil on either side in depth, and 6 mil jutting out. So I cut my piece of steel, which is 70 by 82. And let me just check that, but I'm pretty sure that I did already do that. So actually, sometimes it's just quicker to use a ruler. So 70 mil by 82 mil. Yeah. Now I've checked it. I've just sawn the piece off and I've checked the squareness and actually I don't know if you can see that but it's bang on so I'm very pleased with my saw that was that's a really neat square cut the one I'm not so happy with actually is the edge that was already pre-cut when I got it and also it's got the rounded edge that happens with rolled steel uh, <coughs> so what I'm going to do is I'm going to um, neaten that up on on the milling machine before I start marking up because I want it to be nice and square Okay, so I'm set up at my milling machine. Um, I've made sure everything's nice and square. I'm very confident about that edge being totally square, so that one should should go well. I'm making very fine cuts because I have allowed a little bit more length. So I, I actually cut this piece to, I think, 82.2, 82.3, something like that, to just make sure that I had a little bit of leeway according to um, Harold Hall's measurements. So let's. I've slowed the mill down for steel. Uh, there we go. There we go, that's great. Very pleased with that. Okay, so now on to marking the piece, and then I'm gonna work out how to uh, cut the tenon accurately. That's a bit nerve wracking. Okay, so I'll be completely honest with you. I've had a bit of a, a tough time working out how I'm gonna um, cut the, the tenons here, which I've marked out uh, six millimeters from the edge here and two millimeters down there. And obviously I'm gonna to have to do it four times. Um, the main reason is this wonderful mill is really not a 
tool makers uh, mill as such it's more of a horological mill so it's it's got it hasn't got a massive um, travel distance and with my my vice in it doesn't have the depth to cut the 70 mil it, it's a, it's beyond its scope um, and then I've tried all kinds of various things and various clamps were kind of getting in the way of of the milling head so I've managed to do it now using much longer clamps and I've assured myself this is absolutely level and square and um, so now I'm going to try and mill this um, and let's see how we get on okay so um, I've lined that up and I'm going to do a half millimeter cut I don't want to be too greedy I want to see how it goes and I hope it's all clamped down firmly um, so let's let's have a go at this So I think I can probably afford to go a full mill. Everything seems to be holding up nicely, nice and square. Okay, now there's something really unpleasant that's happened and I don't understand why. Oh, I understand why actually. No, do I? Um, I'm very confused by this because I've actually uh, checked quite carefully in terms of the, the table adjustment, but it is cutting at that angle. It's starting much lower there than there. So I'm a bit concerned about that. So let me do a little bit of thinking and I will try and work out what's going on. So I did work out what was going wrong in the end. It was something really daft, but my, uh, because this mill has a, um, uses the same collets as for lathes, I hadn't tightened, tightened the, uh, <coughs> the cutter enough and it was slipping. Anyway, that's all solved now and everything's fine. Um, and I've set this compass to exactly six millimeters uh, just to see that I got, so that's probably 6.1. And that's exactly the same. So I'm, I'm very pleased with that. Um, that's that's a nice clean cut, and I've only got to do it three more times. So I won't film doing it all of it. You, I think you get the 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 idea. All right. Well, I've done it. Um, I'm quite pleased with it actually. It's turned out better than I actually hoped it would. I've got I've made one mistake. Where is it? There. I had a bit of a bite out of it here. I don't know if it focuses. I don't know if it's focusing right. Um, but it took a lot of uh, kind of adjusting and clamping and making sure everything was really straight so that these were exactly six millimeters, these were exactly um, two millimeters deep, etc., etc. And I'm sure it's not absolutely perfect. But the important thing is that if there is some issue with it, I can file it. And by the way, that was something I was going to say because. I've, I've been kind of naughty and I used my milling machine to do this because I've got one and I like using it 
but um, some of you out there will not have a, um, have a milling machine. And the truth is that this is absolutely doable without a milling machine, but it does require hand filing. And um, it can be done, and maybe needs a bit of practice, but if you're any good at filing, this it would not be a huge problem. And if you want to learn about filing, I think the greatest teacher online is a chap called Click, uh, Chris Clickspring. And I'll put a description to his channel um, below. Uh, he is a master at filing and, and he teaches you very, very well. And he's helped me and I know loads of others a lot. So now the next part that we're going to have to do really are these pieces here that this piece I've just made is going to slot into or are going to slot into. So, no, is going to slot into. So, that's the next bit. So, I have sawn the two um, outer pieces which are going to make up the these two pieces here, this one and this one, so piece 14 and piece 12. Um, I This one is a little too long, but I did that on purpose because I didn't like one of the edges and I'm actually going to mill it um, flat and even and then in the construction of it of course they're going to go on either side of the bit that I've just made um, like this so there's going to be another piece of very accurate cutting that's going to be required um, down these edges these two edges so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to clean this piece up which I won't film and then I will start marking them up Okay, so I've now marked up these pieces. So that is a six mm, uh, yes, a six millimeter gap that way, and I've marked a six millimeter line that way. So hopefully, when I mill this through, that is going to fit into that, or rather, that's going to fit into that. So I'm going to try and do that now. So as I mentioned before, <clears throat> I do have a six millimeter uh, milling cutter. But the problem is that I don't have the appropriate collet for it. So I'm going to use the um, 3 8 one. No, it's not 3 8 I can't remember what size it is. It's a bit too small. Um, and then I'll do a cut to depth and then I'm going to try and get the width right. So that's what I'm going to try and do now. keep doing this and then we'll come back to it when I finished okay so I've done it <clears throat> I'm 
quite happy with it, not very happy with it, because in my mind, this would have fitted like a, you know, it would have made a sort of whoosh when it went in, um, like a sort of perfect uh, <clears throat> fit. This side actually is really good. I'm really pleased with it. This side is looser. Um, so, however, I think it's gonna do, especially if I manage to fix it well, uh, I think I'm going to, well, I, I believe I've got some two-part resin somewhere. I don't know if I do, if, I'm, if I haven't, then I'm just gonna have to pause this video and, and buy some. Um, I'm, I'm reasonably happy, I'm not overjoyed, but I think in terms of what it will do, in terms of um, squareness, and in terms of um, the, the job, I think it will do it. Um, so I'm sort of reasonably pleased with it. I'm sure I could have done it better. Um, but you know, again, that's learning and experience and I'm doing the best I can. So the next stage is gonna be to, I think I've got to drill the holding screws. I've got to look at the, at, at the book because I think he suggests that the, the screws that are gonna go in there, the levers to hold the column should be drilled now um, and then the vertical holds. But I'm just gonna make sure that it, it hasn't got to be assembled first. So, so I'll look into that and I'll come back. All right, so I've marked out these two pieces now. Um, this, you will recognize, this is piece number 12. Um, there's the, the cutaway. Um, I've measured it both, I've measured both holes from this end so that I've got a strict datum here. So this is 25 mil and then this is 60 mil from there. Now, you'll notice from the diagram that they have to be counterboard to 16 millimeter from one side and the other but that's okay because I can I don't have to mark the other side because I'll drill through and then I counter bore into there on one side and into here on the other side the other one which is this one here is the bit that's going to have the columns it's going to hold the columns so there's going to be two 10 millimeter holes drilled all the way through there to hold the the rods that came out of the base that we built before um, again five millimeters going through there and then on the other side uh, that's right on the other side um, a 16 millimeter counterball now in the previous videos I used a center drill I, I think I, you remember these which I showed before um, that's a center drill this is a spotting drill and a few people have commented and quite rightly that why am I using uh, a center drill which is dangerous in steel it can break and it's annoying whereas actually a spotting drill is an extremely hard drill um, that I can use to make a really solid hole quite a way down so I am going to use these from now on I'd forgotten I had them to be completely honest it's a bit pathetic but that's what I'm going to use from now on which will give me a much more accurate uh, centering hole and is much less, less likely to break so this is going to be the spotting drill in action. a very good uh, it, it makes a very good hole and there my I feel that my drill bit's going to be very safe going in there so now I'm going to t uh, drill this to 5.2 mil
that was interesting. Did you see how the vise jumped there? That's a perfect example of why you shouldn't hold the steel with your hand because that could have really gone wrong. If I'd been holding that with my hand, it could have really lacerated everything. Now, I've just realized another problem is that now I'm supposed to drill this down to 16 mil. And the truth is I don't have a 16 mil drill bit. Um, I thought I did, but I don't. Um, so I am going to have to buy another one. I'm going to have to buy one. And if I'd had a forge or chuck on my uh, lathe, I could have put it in the forge or chuck and drill and bored it to 16 mil. However, I don't have such a thing. So um, we're going to have to pause on this. I'm going to drill the other piece with the, the, the two 5.2 mil, uh, mil drill bits. And I'll have to pause and come back when I've got a 16 mil drill bit. Okay, so the holes are drilled, <clears throat> and um, these are the 5.2 millimeter holes that are drilled. Now, actually, I'm looking at the wrong diagram here. Or am I? Yes, this is the this one here, and I've now got to, in a sense, counterbore uh, 16 millimeter holes, one on one side, one on the other. And I don't have a 16 millimeter counterbore. I'm going to use a drill and hope that I can make that work. Now, crucially, which one is counterboard on which side? Because this one has to be counterboard on that side and one on this side. And this could be a major cock up. So if I look at the diagram, it'll be going in like that. So the upper um, screw is going to go on that side and the lower one on that side. So this one has to be counterboard here and this one has to be counterboard there for the nuts to go in to hold the levers. So I'm going to mark that because that is the kind of mistake I don't need to make. So counterboard on this side and the, ooh. Too much oil there. Not marking. And here. All right. So what I'm going to do in order to do that is I'm going to, uh, because I really don't want to miss the center. If I'd had a counter ball, it would have been the best way to do it. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to very carefully start with. Oh, by the way, that's got to be counter ball to a depth of 10 millimeters, so exactly halfway through, and then a 10 millimeter hole is going to be drilled through the top uh, to hold the tapping bar. Um, I'm going to do this with uh, increasing sizes of drills so that I stay true to the center. It's the only way I know how to do it. I can't do it on my milling machine because I haven't got the right bits and pieces for that. So I'm going to have to do it on the pillar drill and I'm just going to take it really, really easy. I'm only going to film bits of it so that you see what I'm basically doing. So what I've decided to do is to um, count every time I use a particular size drill bit I'm going to do all three holes, all three counter bores because I have to set the depth stop to 10 millimeters and I would have to readjust every time so I'd have to do the whole operation three times and it'll become a nightmare. So what I'm going to do to save time is I'm going to do each hole to, with a particular drill bit and then when I've got a new drill bit in place I can readjust the depth etc etc etc.
Okay, so next size and on and on anyway, I think you get the picture. Okay, I've got to confess I'm completely terrified at this point. Um, this is the biggest drill bit I've ever put into this uh, uh, into this chuck, or at least certainly to do to work on metal. Um, and I've worked my way up the holes up to 13 mil, and 13 mil is the biggest I've got, and I had to go out and buy this 16 mil drill bit. Um, I I hope I've got it all centered. I hope this is going to work. I, I really am quite <laughs> anxious about it, but anyway, let's give it a shot. Don't know if you can see that. That looks okay to me. So on to the other side. I've done the four pieces. Um, they seem pretty centered. They're not perfectly beautiful inside as they would have been maybe with a the milling machine or with a counter bore. But you know what, I'm fairly pleased with that. I, I was far more worried that they'd be off center or, or whatever. And so this is the way they're gonna be assembled. And I've been, one's gotta be incredibly careful because there's a temptation to think that the, the locking lever is gonna go into there, but of course it's not. That's gonna be the reverse of it. That's where the nut, the, 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 the nut that's gonna hold the locking lever goes in. So I need, the locking lever is gonna be here and here and the other side of that one. So this is the right order uh, of assembly because can you imagine if you actually put it, did all this work and then you actually assembled it the wrong way around, although I suppose it'd be possible to, to, uh, to um, melt the glue. So this is the best stuff I've been able to find um, easily. Ultra strong metal adhesive, epoxy. I'm gonna to have to mix that up, which is what I'm gonna do. Then I'm gonna glue this piece together. Now I've been, I've been sort of wondering about, you know, whether I do it like this, whether I do it like that. And I think like this, I've been having a look and, and that seems to be pretty square if I did it like this. So this is probably the way I'm gonna do it and let it dry like this. But the first thing I'm gonna do, because of course everything's gonna be really clean and dry and grease free, is I'm gonna bathe these in methylated spirits, um, get all the gunk off, get all the dye come off and make sure it's really oil free. Um, I'm really not being anal here in terms of uh, trying to polish this tool. It's not a tool that's appropriate to polish particularly. But I, I made some irritating marks um, with my rather crappy grinder on the Unimat. So I just want to kind of give it a bit of a finish. Nothing. It's really just to get rid of some marks that are just going to annoy me when I'm looking at it. I've got it on my piece of black granite, which... Is perfectly flat, which is what I use as a, a gauge plate. You see, that's just nicer. Can't quite get rid of these, but I'll give it another go.
Yeah, that's got it. That's good. There. Okay, so I've got this nice, perfectly flat, perfectly clean. Um, I think I want to do both sides in one go, so I'm going to mix quite a lot of this stuff. Okay. No, I'll clean that up in a minute. Okay, now you're supposed to mix it for 45 seconds. This was not designed to mix this much of the stuff. Look, it's all right. It looks like there was a lot more black stuff than there was white stuff. Okay, the moment of truth. I've let this set for a while. Um, I need to see if it's all worked out okay. So let's unclamp it. it feels pretty solid. I mean, I'm going to have to do some cleaning up. But now the moment of truth is it's square. Oh my God, it is. Oh, I'm so pleased. That is such a great result. Um, so as you can see there's some, uh, I don't know if you can see actually, but there's some <coughs> epoxy down there, there's some bits of epoxy down here, so I need to clean all that up. Um, and there's absolutely no reason to film that, but I'm really, I can't tell you how relieved I am about this, and I'm now going to be able to drill the holes through here. I really hope all this is going to be in focus, um, but let me try and explain. So the way this is marked, and Harold Hall has said that these two holes have to be 14, this, this one, this 10 millimeter hole, is going to be 14 millimeters from that edge, which I've done. That one has got to be 18 millimeters from that one, but I thought it was safer to measure both of these from the same datum. So 40 millimeters and 32 millimeters. I then check these two and that's exactly 18 millimeters. So that's great. Now, interestingly, where to locate this hole, he, at first I thought it was kind of strange, but he said it had to be 132 millimeters from the center of this one. So therefore 132 millimeters from here to there. But now I understand because of course that could have been cut to any length and therefore if you had an inaccuracy you would be you'd 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 be in trouble there. So that's what I'm gonna mark now is 132 millimeters. Again, not that easy to do with a camera in the way. Double check. I should make I should make that 133. Sadly, that's my eyesight. But then again, I know I'll punch slightly to the right of there. So um, that's where we're going to be drilling. So I'm going to go a tiny bit to the right. I know this isn't hugely scientific. Forgive me. I'm a dreadful amateur. 
But the other thing he said that was very important was to drill all the holes without removing the, the piece from the vise. Um, and that, again, I understand so that we, we, we really are true the whole time. So that's exactly what I'm going to try and do. <coughs> You may have heard my son calling me in for dinner. Okay, so I'll be drilling this next time. So I've decided to end part three here. I'm a bit frustrated because I would have loved it if I'd had the, the entire column structure finished. But sadly, uh, as you know, I, I underordered this particular rod and the rod that I then subsequently ordered off eBay came and was uh, actually way off. It was 10.22 millimeters. And certainly my lathe is just not, I, I just don't have the, the, the travel to be able to machine a piece that long. So I'll have to order some more. Anyway, that's where I'm so far. I hope you've enjoyed it and we'll finish this off camera. I mean, that's just another piece of rod, but here we are so far. Mm -hmm.